Hello everyone, here I'm gonna speak about human ear, the structure and function of human ear. We all know that uh, ear in human play an important role which actually collects the sound in the form of vibration and then it transmit into the inner part of the ear and ultimately there will be so many auditory nerves which is connected to the inner ear that will take that vibration in the form of action potential to the auditory cortex region in our brain and ultimately based on the memory and learning you can recognize what that particular person is speaking or what that sound is all about okay so you can recognize what i'm speaking correct i'm talking about human ear yes so your ears are uh, helping you to understand this concept yes so this is the model of uh, human ear uh, in my next session i'm gonna speak about the mechanism of hearing how exactly the mechanism of uh, hearing will take place inside the ear particularly inside the inner part of the ear so this is the inner part of the ear so it is very easy for us to understand uh, the ear can be divided into three important uh, parts okay three parts uh, can be seen okay first i'll write it the first part so three parts the first part is external ear that is outer ear okay so okay okay let us uh, just uh, keep it this is the outer ear and uh, called as the pinna and you could see a small kennel okay so this is external auditory meters okay this particular structure produces the wax ear wax okay so what we have in the ear we have tiny hairs here in the external auditory meters and ear wax because they have specialized glands i'll talk about it and the, what is this this is tympanic membrane yes ear drum okay so these three components makes external ear and this particular cavity is enclosing the tiny bones the three ear ossicles uh, we'll write it that is actually our middle ear so middle ear mainly contains a cavity here that is air filled cavity which contains three important ear ossicles ear ossicle is nothing but the bones ear bones okay so that is called as mis malleus incus and stapes stapes are the smallest bones in our body okay note that point okay so we'll talk about it and uh, there is one canal also here in this particular model you cannot see the canal so that canal runs into your pharynx they play an important role in uh, maintaining uh, the air pressure uh, that is inside of the tympanic membrane and outside of the tympanic membrane that is very important and the last part which is uh, called as the inner ear or we just write internal ear that is the innermost ear part okay so which contains main hearing organ okay so that is called as cochlea we'll talk about it okay so now first we'll talk about external ear what is this external ear okay we keep these things aside okay so now you can see this particular structure is the pinna correct so this is the pinna and it is also called as ear lobe okay so pinna or ear lobe that we that is uh, we have that is uh, the first part is pinna it is also called as ear lobe okay and uh, what is the function of this see the structure so this actually collects the vibration from outside okay so this collects because because of that like you know you could see it's a bit wider in structure correct so the structure is modified in such a way that so that it can collect the vibration from all the sides it collects the vibration then it directs the vibration into this kennel that is inside of the ear you could see a kennel here correct so we just write the function of a pinna what is the function okay so we write it collects the vibration and directs the vibration into the inner ear that's it okay so into the inner part of the ear okay part of ear so this is the main function of a pinna and pinna is actually supported by the cartilage we all know that ear has cartilage inside okay so fine so next of uh, uh, second part of the external ear is this canal this canal can you see the canal here okay so this is the canal called as external auditory meters okay we just keep this the second part is 
a long canal called as external because it is situated outside of the inner ear so external auditory because they play important role in transferring that vibration into the inner ear so auditory meters so this is very important structure in our ear and uh, this particular external auditory meters has certain glands inside okay so glands are present let me just put the dots okay so what is that gland is called as the gland is uh, called as Ceruminous gland. Can you pronounce this? Ceruminous gland. And this ceruminous gland have the ability to produce earwax. What is the function of earwax? Nothing but protection. Correct. So, for example, a tiny insect uh, trying to enter into the inner ear, these wax will uh, help the inner ear uh, from uh, these, uh, like, you know, getting uh, uh, these insects away uh, from the inner ear. That is nothing but protection. Correct. Okay. So, the insects get stuck within this wax. Okay. So, let me just tell you which particular. Uh, cell or oh, sorry cere ceruminous gland actually uh, produces wax and uh, uh, which what is the other name of this wax that is nothing but called as cerumen cerumen is nothing but the wax the biological name actually okay so cerumen is nothing but ceruminous gland okay so that is wax and the, the function is not required here because you know that the third is actually called as tympanic membrane okay so we write tympanic membrane so tympanic membrane is also called as ear drum we are a bit familiar with this word correct ear drum where exactly ear drum is situated okay next to the auditory meters uh, we have this particular structure which is actually called as the ear drum or tympanic membrane okay so here so this is one structure which is present in the external ear which collects that vibration of sound got it okay so, and it trans for that particular vibration into middle ear okay here we have bones okay so this is actually the place of uh, the eardrum okay you should be very careful do not put uh, any stick or uh, dangerous uh, things inside okay so that will uh, really tear uh, this uh, membrane because it's very thin it's very very thin uh, membrane okay so this is very important if it is ruptured and obviously you cannot even hear any voice or noise okay so we'll just keep it here what is the function of this it actually collects the vibration so that's it it just receives or collects the vibration from auditory meters okay so that's it so this is the thing and interestingly uh, you see this particular uh, structure that is a uh, tympanic membrane actually separates external ear from the middle ear correct so this is the kind of barrier but still it belongs to external ear part but still it separates external ear from the middle ear okay so that is the thing if you want you can note on this not on that point also so separates external ear from middle ear so this is all about external ear there is nothing but uh, this one this particular structure the middle ear mainly contains uh, a pipe okay let me just you know talk about the middle ear what is this middle ear so this particular thing it's nothing but air filled cavity okay so this is air filled cavity so we write it it mainly contains a cavity a small cavity which is filled with air air filled cavity and this air filled cavity mainly contains two parts okay two things two components what are they so the first one is a long canal which runs down towards your pharynx here uh, it's not given but there is a canal which actually goes down goes down from this uh, fluid filled cavity sorry air filled cavity that is middle ear okay so what do you call that you call it as eustachian canal so eustachian canal is very important actually they maintain the air pressure so we write what is the function of eustachian canal that actually starts from this middle ear and runs towards your pharynx so they maintain air pressure that is equilibrium okay between the middle ear and the pharynx so that's very important actually or between the external ear and the middle ear okay so that is eustachian or eustachian canal that is maintains uh, the air pressure okay so we have one more thing that is called as ear ossicles okay so you get some questions for your need that is 
name the year ossicles in order or they may give you the year ossicles in jumbled manner and you need to arrange them okay so year ossicle let me just write the names it's very simple to remember m i s miss okay so what is this m m is malleus so malleus is the first year ossicle okay so here uh, in this model you could see this is uh, external ear and here itself to the eardrum we have m that is malus then comes the incus then comes the stapes okay they are all connected they are all connected ear ossicles they help in uh, transmitting that vibration into the inner ear okay so incus and stapes so what about the stapes it is the smallest bone in our body so these are the three important ear ossicles this is the direction or order so malus comes first it's one bone which is connected to the eardrum it is connected to eardrum and this one is connected to the malleus and the stapes and the stapes is now connected to this portion that is the starting portion of the inner ear this portion actually got it so this is the inner ear and this portion is called as right here oval membrane okay so stapes is connected to oval membrane okay so stapes is actually connected to the over oval membrane what is the other name of this uh, oval membrane very important it is also called as fenestra ovalis fenestra ovalis this structure this structure is actually called as the fenestra ovalis and you could see the stapes here okay this stapes is connected to fenestra ovalis okay so this fenestra ovalis is connected to the inner ear that means the vibration will be collected by the fenestra ovalis from the stapes and then it will transmit that vibration into the inner layer we'll see what is there inside the inner layer okay so i need space let me erase it but before that let me write the component the parts of the internal ear okay so internal ear mainly contains okay so we write that this word labyrinth so internal ear mainly contains labyrinth so this is the labyrinth so you could see a structure right so this is the labyrinth okay so it normally looks like this okay so it's very difficult yeah this is actually the arrangement of the labyrinth they whatever you see here this is nothing but the labyrinth and this is one is auditory nerve okay so nerve uh, this part is uh, actually containing uh, semicircle structures correct i'll talk about it and you could see uh, this particular circular structure the like coiled structures these are coiled structures okay so that is nothing but the cochlea so labyrinth mainly contains uh, two important uh, parts actually okay so we just write the labyrinth is divided into two important uh, parts one is uh, the vestibular apparatus this vestibular apparatus is very very important uh, for uh, maintaining the equilibrium of the body that is balancing of the body okay so whereas the other part the second important labyrinth is actually called as the cochlea cochlea is the main hearing organ please note this point you get this question name the main hearing organ in the ear cochlea cochlea what is the vestibule apparatus do they actually maintain the body equilibrium maintenance of the body balance okay so if you look into the structure of the cochlea i just collected a shell from outside and it looks like this the cochlea looks like this like a coiled shell correct so like this or you can imagine a snail which is like coiled correct so this is what you see the cochlea like this so this is cochlea very very complex structure very complex structure even uh, this particular the vestibular upper it is also very complex structure let me explain the organization of this vestibular apparatus and cochlea now let me erase everything and clean up clean the board it takes time it's not uh, the white uh, marker board it's entirely different okay now i'm going to explain the structure of the internal ear you could see this is the cavity for the main internal ear component what do you see inside the internal ear only this structure that's it so this is nothing but internal ear component got it so what do you what do you call for this this is nothing but called as labyrinth so this is labyrinth got it okay so we don't want this now we just keep the labyrinth here 
So what is this labyrinth is all about? Okay, so to explain that, let me just, you know, bring this two pipes. Okay, so we just keep it here. Actually, you could see the white color uh, structure here, right? Okay, so this is the bony part of the labyrinth, the bony part. So this is bone, nothing but bone, bony part of the labyrinth. And if I just, you know, cut it and show you what is there inside, you will see a small pipe inside. So that means this is bony covering. And inside this also there is a small pipe. So here also small pipe, there also small pipe, inside pipe. Okay, that means it is nothing but pipe inside a pipe. Got it? Or pipe within a pipe. So here, very simple, the main labyrinth is uh, mainly containing, uh, let me just uh, drag it down somewhere else here, mainly contains the labyrinth has two components. The labyrinth has two components. Okay, so what do you call for that component? One component is the bony labyrinth so we just call it as bony because uh, from outside it is covered with the bone correct so from outside it is covered with the bone so bony labyrinth oh, very difficult. yes whereas you know inside you see uh, another labyrinth structure which is pipe so this one the pipe within a pipe a small pipe is there so that is called as membranous labyrinth that's it so you see that membranous labyrinth okay so here the bony labyrinth collects only vibration but the membranous labyrinth are very very important because it is filled with the liquid okay so that liquid get vibrated because of the sound vibration and ultimately the sound will be converted into action potential and finally it will be carried to your brain okay so membranous labyrinth is very important inside the labyrinth so first let us see the structure of this bony and membranous labyrinth inside this uh, labyrinth okay so this is the bony one outside okay the bigger one the, the, the wider pipe is uh, the bony one and you see uh, another tiny pipe inside that is pipe within a pipe okay and you see a gap here right so this gap between the two pipes you see this gap and this gap is uh, filled with a liquid so if i just you now take a a small uh, a small amount of uh, liquid and uh, just you know put here in this gap between membranous labyrinth and the bony labyrinth okay so that liquid will be called as the perilymph so here you see perilymph you know about lymph peri means outside okay so that is exactly present between the membranous labyrinth and inner side of the bony labyrinth in here, here you could see a gap correct cavity so here the liquid is present that is called as perilymph okay and here within the membranous labyrinth you could see a big cavity it's nothing but a pipe right here also there is one more liquid so that is called as endolymph peri means outside endo means inside so here also it contains a liquid called as endolymph so perilymph here endolymph here got it so we will talk about it hope you understood this structure this is the bony labyrinth and this one is membranous labyrinth the, the smaller pipe inside and a gap is filled with a liquid called as perilymph and here it is filled with endolymph okay so done we just you know, talk about that so let me just uh, write the component that is between bony labyrinth and uh, membranous labyrinth we have a liquid so that is called as perilymph so perilymph is seen between bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth okay so this is actually the structure whereas you see one more liquid which is called as endolymph endolymph which is present within the membranous labyrinth that's it okay so we write it present within membranous labyrinth okay so these are the fluid uh, you need to remember the name peri means outside endo means inside it's very simple there is nothing okay so now we'll talk about the two types of uh, membranous labyrinth actually labyrinth has two important uh, part uh, that is nothing but i said earlier vestibular apparatus and cochlea cochlea is the main hearing organ now we'll talk about the first part of the labyrinth so what do you call the first part of the labyrinth so we just write Roman number one because it is the first part of the labyrinth okay so I'm talking about this part only this part so you could see circular canal right? kind of semi-circular canals okay structure so this is the first part of the labyrinth okay what do you call that structure 
you just call it as vestibular apparatus okay so we simply call it as vestibular apparatus the vestibular apparatus mainly contains two important uh, structures okay so this structure is the second part of the labyrinth which is a uh, kind of like uh, coiled structure like a coiled snail uh, which is called as the cochlea main hearing organ i'll talk about cochlea later i'll talk about vestibular apparatus now okay so this is the diagram this is cochlea and this is vestibular apparatus this is vestibular apparatus what do you see in the vestibular apparatus you see some important structure you could see uh, these are uh, semicircular canals correct semicircular canal and this is uh, the membranous labyrinth this is membranous labyrinth so you see three semicircular canal and it which is colored in uh, different colors okay and this is the membranous labyrinth and outside what we have so very simple i have already told you we have bony labyrinth this is only for your understanding i'm drawing this okay so bony labyrinth is present what do you, what we have here between bony and uh, the membranous labyrinth we have perilymph a liquid okay so we'll not talk about uh, the perilymph or uh, the bony labyrinth we'll talk about only this structure this is a uh, membranous labyrinth containing this blue color thing is nothing but the fluid called as endolymph okay of the membranous labyrinth okay so we have three circular structures here what kind of circular structures we have semicircular structures correct so we have hope it is uh, visible to you semi circular structures actually called as semi circular canals okay so we have semi circular canals what is the function of the semi circular canal this is very important uh, for maintaining the balance or equilibrium uh, for example like it detects let me write here it detects nodding of uh, head okay so whenever you head the uh, node uh, the head up and down the message will be sent because the it is filled with the liquid correct so it is not uh, completely filled with the liquid so when the when you nod your head obviously like you know the fluid actually moves here and there it's like you, know, you can take half filled water bottle and uh, just you know tilt the water bottle and you could see the movement of the water correct so that's the same uh, mechanism will be seen inside this uh, membranous labyrinth that is containing endolymph the movement of the endolymph will actually allow the brain to adjust the body posture so here when you nod your head up and down obviously the movement of the endolymph will be seen within the membranous labyrinth and it will send message to the brain that body posture is not correct now correct the body posture so this is the main function of it so that is one function or as uh, one more thing when you like you know tilt tilt okay so uh, yeah okay so when you just you know tilt like this like this obviously like you know this is not a proper body posture correct so the moment inside the semicircular canals the endolymph starts moving here and there and obviously it send message to the brain telling that the body posture is not proper correct it and finally it will be corrected like this so tilts or tilting of the body so right like this okay so this is the thing and even like you know shaking side to side okay so these are all actually the thing which is detected by the endolymph which is present inside the semicircular canal and ultimately the message will be sent to the brain okay so this is the main main function okay so we can write the main function that is okay so semicircular canal mainly help in motion okay when you walk when you run when you jump all this stuff and even it also like uh, decides what is the position of the head whether it is proper when you bend your head for longer time automatically without your notice you just you know correct your head position that's it okay that is done by the semicircular canals endolymph and even the spatial orientation so what is exactly your body position okay so in the space that is in your home or while sleeping everything okay so that is actually the main function of semicircular canal and now okay so you know semicircular canal for your competitive you may get a question from semicircular canal that is uh, see here we have three semicircular canal half circles correct which is attached to this particular portion and here 
see this is the origin of that semicircular canal correct you see it it looks like a node correct it has got a name actually so that is called as ampulla okay so we'll talk about it later and uh, see this is vertical correct this semicircular canal is vertical okay so it's very difficult to show you okay so yeah kind of it so this is vertical and this is also vertical so we have two semicircular canals vertical two semi circular canals are verticular got it whereas the one semi circular canal so which is bit perpendicular to these two and they are, that is horizontal in position so simple right so horizontal okay so this is uh, the main thing but always remember that all the semi circular canals are closed or like you know covered by the bony labyrinth i did not draw the bony labyrinth that is not required okay whatever the color you see within the semicircular canal is nothing but the endolymph okay so the endolymph actually decide the position of the body or orientation of your body so that's fine now uh, we'll talk about uh, another structure that is situated just uh, below the semicircular canal so this structure okay what what you exactly call this particular structure this structure is uh, actually called as okay we'll write here the nodes we'll write here crista ampullaris please note all this stuff crista ampullaris are nothing but the point of origin of the semicircular canal from the main structure okay so crista ampullaris it is also called as ampulla simple we can also call it as ampulla what is the speciality of this for example like you know if i just you know take this out and draw that node so which looks like this like a bulb so this is the thing that is crista ampullaris or ampulla looks like this how many ampullas we have here one two three four five and this one this one is six because we have three semicircular canal each semicircular canal has to ampulla crista ampullaris okay what is the speciality of this inside this uh, ampulla you see millions of cells tiny cells are there they are highly sensory cells sensitive cells okay so these cells are called as crista that is the reason why the name is crista ampullaris the ampulla containing crista cells okay so these crista cells detects the movement of the endolymph that's it endolymph movement so based on the orientation of uh, the endolymph within this particular semicircular canal uh, the crista receives the message in the form of signals and that will be transmitted to the brain for correcting the body position so this is a thing is happening okay in our body and okay fine so below that below this particular nodes so this is the origin of nodes okay in the labyrinth and here you see so many structures okay structures will be seen and what you call this particular structure okay so i need to take another color okay so that structure the upper structure that is just below the ampulla crista ampullaris this structure is actually called as utriculus what do you call utriculus utriculus is the structure and below the utriculus you see another structure okay below, just below utriculus you see one more structure which is actually called as saculus see the terms utriculus saculus got it okay so what is this uh, function of uh, utriculus and uh, saculus okay so change the color actually they have specialized uh, sensory cells called as macula so remember you get a question crista are the cells of ampulla what is ampulla ampulla are nothing but the nodes of the semi circular canals okay whereas what is macula macula are nothing but tiny cells present within utriculus and saculus these are the sensory cells okay what is the function they are receptors receptor cells they receive the signal okay then actually they transmit that signal to the brain okay so here utriculus saculus and even crista ampullaris are helpful in the orientation the position of the body so that's it so that means it could be the motion while walking or maybe like your head position while sleeping or while just you know nodding tilting your head or body whatever it is got it so they help in spatial orientation these are all the cells macula and the crista of utriculus saculus and the 
ampulla okay so this is a uh, very important uh, now we will just you know go to one more thing you could see one more uh, tiny structures here correct so these are the tiny structures and these are called as ear stones what do you call ear stones okay so uh, they are made up of calcium so ear stones are made up of calcium hence it is calcareous in nature calcareous bodies ear stones what is exactly the other name of ear stone so there is a name for this ear stone in a biological term that is otoliths what are otoliths otoliths are nothing but ear stones okay ear stones that is calcareous stones present within this particular labyrinth so that is otoliths okay so this is a, a, the important thing now we go to the next portion so we are done with this portion everything is done got it so semicircular canals we have three two vertical one horizontal and uh, here we have nodes actually you could see the node the bulgy portion okay so this is called as crista ampullaris containing the crista cells okay and uh, here here this portion we have the utriculus and sacculus utriculus sacculus containing type of receptor cells called as the macula got it done now let us just you know, go further the pipe is now going further okay so this structure is the main organ for hearing and this is called as cochlea cochlea okay again i need to erase this because i need to write some points okay text time the last uh, part of the inner or internal ear is called as the cochlea the main organ of hearing very very important okay so we write that organ is called as cochlea okay so from cochlea we can expect some questions uh, uh, this uh, uh, entire structure of cochlea is a bit complex not that easy but i'll try my best to make you understand that okay so uh, as i said earlier that you know the cochlea is a uh, coiled structure which looks like this shell correct okay i hope this uh, shell is clear which is coiled which is coiled actually like uh, you can imagine a coiled uh, snail or any or like you can imagine a snake which is coiled okay so like this so what is this part uh, for example like just uh, let me just you know take a small portion of this uh, structure the cochlea or maybe uh, okay cochlea itself and draw here okay so i'll draw here small portion is taken out and draw and so this is uh, the bony labyrinth correct bony labyrinth okay so what we have inside we have membranous labyrinth so this is membranous labyrinth so what we have here is nothing but the liquid called as the perilymph so everything is surrounded by perilymph and what we have here we have endolymph this is very simple actually when you just you know take the transverse section of the cochlea and see you see this structure got it okay but here there are so many structures uh, which is present which uh, gives a bit complex uh, look to this uh, cochlea okay so if this is the endolymph or uh, like membranous labyrinth and you see a kennel like pipe like structure just below the endolymph this is nothing but a perilymph structure okay so this is the bony structure and this is uh, the perilymph and we have two perilymph containing structures okay exactly uh, present uh, this uh, between this uh, endolymph structure okay like this one above on below so this is what you see okay so in this diagram you could see this particular circle is nothing but containing the perilymph this is containing perilymph and this one is also containing perilymph so now you got the idea what is this now the black color circle is nothing but endolymph containing structure but in the cochlea these structures have got a specific name that's it very simple no confusion here got it okay so that means we have only one membranous perilymph oh, sorry membranous labyrinth here so this is membranous labyrinth okay and we have complexly arranged perilymph that is bony labyrinth here okay which looks like we have two but actually one okay but because of the orientation it looks like two okay between the uh, between the two perilymph structure we have this membranous labyrinth okay so this membranous labyrinth containing endolymph which actually collects the vibration and ultimately transmit that vibration to this particular region okay it is called as organ of corti then we have tectorial membrane here and ultimately the auditory nerves are here so this is what actually the movement of the 
waves or vibration to the brain that is the auditory cortex region of the brain okay so see the structure and if you have time you can also draw the diagram because could be asked uh, for your competitor this diagram is taken from ncrt textbook that's it okay so let us label it now just you know we will label it uh, this is uh, for your understanding and this structure the circle in the cochlea is actually called as scala vestibuli scala vestibuli is uh, this structure what is there inside the scala vestibuli it is nothing but perilymph perilymph that means it is understood perilymph means obviously it is bony labyrinth okay here this one the last one okay so this is called as scala tympani see the names okay scala vestibuli and scala tympani between that we have membranous uh, labyrinth this one this structure and uh, this structure is filled with endolymph because all membranous labyrinth enclosing the liquid called as endolymph itself and this portion is called as scala media okay so scala media plays an important role in transmitting that sound vibration i just write vib vibration okay so this is important okay so let me write e what is e endolymph p perilymph and perilymph that's it nothing else okay simple i'm just you know keeping this uh, thing very very simple for you that is cochlea structure okay so now if you just you know take the scala vestibuli okay that is filled with uh, perilymph the outer layer of the scala vestibuli is covered with a membrane you could see that is a bit uh, okay where is the color okay so here so this is the outer region of the scala vestibuli okay so you see it has uh, surrounded by a small membrane like structure correct you see the membrane like structure here okay so this is actually called as Reisner's membrane what do you call Reisner's membrane you could get a question for your need like Reisner's membrane is seen in very simple outside of the scala vestibuli or in scala vestibuli that is actually the membrane of scala vestibuli got it what is the importance significance of this resinous membrane present on the structure membrane of the scala vestibuli that is nothing but it actually separates the scala vestibuli from scala media what is the function it separate okay separates scala vestibuli from scala media that's it okay so this is actually the main function of Reisner's membrane right full scala media this one scala vestibuli okay there is no connection actually here there is no connection or uh, the direct connection between scala vestibuli and scala tympani there is one more structure which is not required for you you now when you go for medical obviously we're going to study the entire structure of cochlea in detail okay so this is only for 12th or 11th standard level okay so fine uh, now let us see uh, in this endolymph is carrying the vibration okay just imagine the endolymph or this particular scala media is nothing but a continuation of your uh, utriculus or sacculus correct so continuation part correct okay so yeah continuation part that's it so inside that liquid is there that is endolymph and ultimately the vibration will now hit this particular region so this particular region so that is drawn here see this one is scala media now correct circle and you could see this particular structure the green line so this one the basement okay just below this scala media you see a, a horizontal line that is called as basilar membrane please note this so that structure is called as basilar membrane and just above the basilar membrane we have a small hair like structure here these are highly sensitive cells hair cells auditory hair cells okay so this structure is actually called as auditory hair cells these auditory hair cells are situated just above the basilar membrane and here we have one organ just above the basilar membrane there is one organ actually so there is one organ this organ is called as organ of corti so what is this organ of corti and what is the speciality of it organ of corti is the organ which is situated just above the basilar membrane and situated just below the scala media correct yes so we have organ of corti here you see the green lines right that is nothing but organ of corti what is the speciality of organ organ of corti which contains hair like structure here tiny hair like structure that is nothing but hair cells or auditory hair cells okay so organ of corti contain auditory hair cells 
here when the endolymph now hits the organ of corti here the hair cells are there right they just you know bend they just bend you know vibration causes the hair cells to bend towards this side the right side here you could see a small tiny structure that is drawn here see this tiny st structure that is just above the organ of corti where when the vibrations are hitting this uh, hair cells or orga organ of corti it will bend and touches this particular structure a membrane like structure is there that is called as tectorial membrane see the spelling tectorial membrane okay so these are the things things basilar membrane organ of corti containing auditory hair cells and tectorial membrane where when the vibration hits the hair cell of organ of corti it will bend forward and touches this tectorial membrane and this tectorial membrane now gets vibrated so get the vibration got it so this leads to production of action potential if you just you know look uh, what is uh, there further of tectorial membrane so this is tectorial membrane tectorial membrane see tectorial membrane is somewhat attached to this structure so what is this structure is this structure is nothing but auditory nerve i just write a n auditory nerve so ultimately the sound is collected by the auditory nerve and it will be transmitted to our auditory cortex of the brain so this is the thing actually okay so this is all about cochlea uh, there is no confusion remember this okay no confusion here this center structure is nothing but called as the labyrinth labyrinth has two important component outside what you see is the bony and inside you see small pipe like structure they are called as membranous labyrinth membranous labyrinth is containing a liquid or fluid called as what you call that fluid that you call it as endolymph and between the membranous labyrinth and uh, the bony labyrinth there is a space which is filled with a liquid called as perilymph that's it so if you cut it you see the same thing got it pipe within a pipe that's it so cochlea is circular in nature and the diagram is drawn here so this is all about the cochlea please note all the points whatever i have explained uh, in this particular session got it because could be asked okay could be asked for your competitive neat examination so you should not uh, make any mistake i hope the entire session is very very clear to you okay thank you